first let me say thank you all for coming here today. The last few days have crystallized what we already knew. This election is about our priorities. It's about whether we are fighting for New Hampshire's middle class and the seniors, or for big corporations and millionaires. Congressman Frank Ginta and Congressman Paul Ryan have made their priorities quite clear. Several times, Congressman Ginta voted for the Ginta-Ryan plan that puts millionaires and outsourcers ahead of the middle class and our seniors. This is a budget that's fundamentally out of step with our Granite State values, and here's why. The Ryan-Ginta budget would end Medicare as we know it and gut investments in everything we need to grow this economy and to strengthen our middle class, all in order to pay for massive tax cuts and advantages for big oil companies, millionaires, and corporations that ship our jobs overseas. It would turn Medicare into a voucher program, it would force seniors to shop around, and it would cost them $6,000 a year more. It would make very devastating cuts to the middle class by slashing Pell Grants for nearly 10 million students. It would toss 200,000 of our most vulnerable children out of Head Start. And it would slash investments in clean energy by 19%. It would make these cuts and more, while at the same time giving millionaires a huge tax break. Now we all agree that we need to cut our spending and we know we need to reduce our debt. But Congressman Ginta has the wrong priorities for New Hampshire and the wrong priorities for this country. We should not be ending Medicare as we know it and gutting investments in the middle class and hurting seniors just so we can pay for tax breaks for millionaires, big oil, and companies that are shipping their jobs out. We need to protect seniors. We need to protect our middle class. We need to grow this economy and we need to create jobs. They simply have the wrong priorities for New Hampshire and for America. There's a very, very clear choice to be made in this election. And New Hampshire is paying close attention. The middle class and the seniors in New Hampshire know exactly who is standing up for them. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce a congressman who has come to speak about this. This is Congressman Chris Van Hollen from Maryland. We welcome you here, and we thank Carol. you for coming thank to make these much. issues quite clear. Thank you, Carol. Thanks. Thank you. Well, first let me say what an honor it is to be um, with Carol Schaefwater uh, and all of you up here in uh, New Hampshire. It's great to be with uh, everybody who's uh, gathered here. And I wanted to come up here to talk a little bit about the choice that Carol just uh, spoke about, uh, because I think the choice has been sharpened uh, substantially uh, as a result of Mitt Romney's decision uh, to pick Paul Ryan uh, to be his running mate. Uh, I'm a colleague of Paul Ryan's. We served together in the Congress. Uh, and I should say that we get along very well uh, personally. Uh, but we have strong fundamental uh, differences uh, over uh, the future direction of the country. Uh, and the reality is that the Ryan-Romney plan, and make no mistake, uh, that Mitt Romney uh, called this plan marvelous. Uh, he said he would sign it if he was President of the United States. Uh, what that does uh, is make a fundamental choice. And the choice they make is to provide these massive windfall tax breaks to the wealthiest Americans at the expense of everyone and everything else. Well, now, first of all, the whole idea of providing these big tax breaks is in service to this failed trickle-down economic theory uh, from the Bush years, and we know the end of that movie. It's not a theory anymore. Uh, it's been put into practice. It crashed against the wall of reality. At the end of the eight years of the Bush administration, uh, we lost net private sector jobs, and the only thing that went up was the deficit. So now, here come Romney and Ryan. Uh, to say they've got another plan which provides another round of tax breaks for the very wealthy. And I think the American people, and I know the people in New Hampshire, are going to do the math and figure out very quickly that if you ask nothing more from the very wealthy to reduce the deficit, if you say we're not going to ask the very wealthy to pay one more penny, in fact, you're going to give them another tax break, and you say you're serious about reducing the long-term deficit, which we should be, then those tax cuts for the very wealthy come at the expense of everyone and everything else. It's pretty simple math. Uh, they come at the expense of middle class taxpayers. Uh, they come at the expense of deep cuts in education and 
research and science, things that are important to power our economy and help us compete uh, against China and India and other uh, competitors. And they hit seniors on Medicare very hard. And I just want to uh, develop this a little bit more because here's what they do. When we passed the Affordable Care Act, uh, we made some savings in Medicare by eliminating overpayments to some of the private insurance companies in the Medicare program called Medicare Advantage. And it turned out that while the original idea in Medicare was that these private plans would save Medicare money, that the Medicare plan, that means seniors on Medicare as well as taxpayers, were providing these sort of windfall payments to the private insurance companies. In fact, on average, they were being paid at 114% of the fee-for-service plan. So what the Affordable Care Act did, it says it makes no sense to be making these overpayments to these private insurance companies. Let's take some of that savings and instead strengthen some of the benefits in Medicare. And specifically, we did that in two areas. We closed the prescription drug donut hole. So for seniors who have very high prescription drug costs, they no longer are left on their own. Uh, we also eliminated the co-pays uh, for seniors to get preventive health services because the idea was that we wanted to encourage uh, more seniors to get preventative care up front, stay healthy longer, rather than more costly uh, treatment when, it, when a condition gets out of control. Uh, and so I want to be really clear about what the Romney-Ryan plan uh, does. First of all, despite talk about the fact that it doesn't impact any seniors for 10 years, that's just not true. So two things would immediately happen. One is that seniors with high prescription drug costs would pay more. And in fact, uh, in New Hampshire just last year, um, about 13,000 New Hampshire citizens saved more than $8.2 million. That's just last year on that piece. Last year, uh, over 155,000 New Hampshire seniors had preventive health care under Medicare. Under the Rom Romney Ryan plan, all of them would pay more. And I mean now, not 10 years from now. Now, the other thing the Romney Ryan plan will do is transfer rising health care costs onto seniors. That's how their plan works. That's how they say they're going to save Medicare money. It doesn't reduce health care costs overall. It just says we're going to pass the bill on to seniors. And that is why the Congressional Budget Office uh, looked at one version of the Ryan plan, said it would cost over $6,000 in 10 years. And all the versions will cost seniors substantially more because they don't get at the underlying cost issue. They're just passing the bill uh, on to seniors. And I think it's important to understand, I want to emphasize this point, what they're proposing for seniors on Medicare is a much worse deal than members of Congress have for themselves under their health care plan. Members of Congress have a health care plan that protects them against rising health care costs. And the reason for that is under the Medicare, under the, under the Federal Employee Health Benefit Plan, which is what members of Congress are on, as health care costs rise, the support from the plan remains at 72%. Healthcare costs go up, you still get 72% of those costs. The way the Romney Ryan plan saves money is by offloading those costs onto seniors and by delinking them. So as healthcare costs rise, the value of the voucher goes down. Healthcare costs go up, the value of the voucher goes down, seniors eat the difference uh, in costs. And it's a fundamentally different approach than we took in the Affordable Care Act. The idea in the Affordable Care Act was to save money in Medicare by eliminating these overpayments to private insurance uh, companies, by changing the, some of the incentives in the Medicare system to reward providers for the quality of care they provided, not the quantity of care. Uh, and we used, as I say, some of those savings to strengthen Medicare benefits. So the Romney Ryan campaign is now engaged in a totally dishonest discussion when it comes to a Medicare. I encourage everybody to get the facts because these are two fundamentally different approaches. One approach says we need to realign incentives in the Medicare system, that we need to end the overpayments to uh, the 
private insurance companies that were getting a windfall and use savings to strengthen benefits. And the Romney Ryan approach is simple. Transfer the, the rising costs and the risks for those costs onto seniors. Uh, and I would point out that seniors on Medicare have a median income of $23,000. So while the Romney Ryan plan proposes to transfer all these additional health care costs onto seniors at median incomes of $23,000, they're providing these windfall tax breaks to people like Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney. So the people picking up the tab for the tax break to Mitt Romney and the very wealthy are seniors on Medicare, are kids who will see their education investment cut uh, and significant cuts uh, in investments necessary to help our economy grow. So I'm really you know, encouraging everybody to take a look at these plans. Uh, it was a privilege to serve with Carol Shea Porter when she was in Congress. I know she reflects uh, the priorities and values of this district, and I know her opponent, Congressman Ginta, has voted in lockstep with this Romney plan. Uh, and now they're all on the same ticket together. And so I really hope people will focus on what the consequences are for uh, the people of New Hampshire, because when they do, I'm, I'm confident that they will choose to reelect Carol Shea uh, board. So thank you for that. Thank you. Great, we can either take a couple of questions or else we can do some one-on-ones.